Now, at 11, after a controversial decision today, a judge releasing the McKinleyville man accused of murder. Tonight, a rally being held for Josiah Lawson, the HSU student killed at an off-campus party. Plus, an arrest made in connection to a deadly hit and run. Now, officers looking for a truck that they say was also involved. And the man who left a trail of destruction will tell you where he was found and what those who knew him are saying. North Coast News at 11 starts now. Live from our studio in downtown Eureka, you're watching North Coast News on KAEF ABC 23. At 11, get the facts right. Tonight, a rally still happening in Arcata for David Josiah Lawson. This coming after charges were dismissed against the Kyle Christopher Zollner, the McKinleyville man suspected of murdering Lawson. All as the Zollner family releasing a statement tonight. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Karen Bright. And I'm Nazi Javi. The five-day preliminary hearing in the tragic death of 19-year-old David Josiah Lawson ended today with the judge ruling that there was not enough evidence to hold 23-year-old Kyle Zollner to answer on murder charges. Justice for Josiah! Justice for Josiah! Judge Dale Reinholdson dismissing the charges against murder suspect Kyle Zollner. The judge explaining his decision in front of a packed courtroom, saying, quote, it's a very difficult and confusing factual situation, saying that no one saw the stabbing, no one saw Zollner with a knife, and there wasn't physical evidence tying him to the crime. He went on to say that he just didn't believe the evidence presented against Zollner met the requirement to hold him on the murder charges. Zollner's public defender, Luke Brownfield, talked about the Zollner family's reaction to the judge's decision. It's hard for me to speak for them, but I think their their mood has been, um, well, was today, obviously happy for Kyle um, and excited that, that, that he is coming home. Um, but their mood and anything like this, I mean, there's a young man who is, by all accounts, seems to be a really good kid and he lost his life so they're saddened the humboldt county district attorney's office responding saying it presented all available physical evidence and testimony by 17 witnesses the da releasing a statement saying in part quote the information presented in the hearing differed from the information available when the case was charged and additional information is expected including more analysis of the knife found at the scene and analysis of blood samples found on clothing. There was a fingerprint that didn't match Kyle's um, and that fibers did not match to Kyle's sweatshirt. Brownfield says who touched that knife found at the scene is still a mystery. We still don't know right now whose fingerprint is on that knife. No, um, I think APD is continuing to test whose uh, fingerprint might be on that night. The DA says the investigation is still open. And with the charges dismissed, it's left many wondering what happens next. Do police have more evidence? Do they have another suspect? So many unanswered questions. With Arcata Police Chief Tom Chapman saying in part, quote, the result of the preliminary hearing does not change the vigor in which we will continue to pursue this case. The men and women of the Arcata Police Department are committed to justice for Josiah. HSU releasing this statement, saying in part, quote, Humboldt State University is certainly disappointed by what appears to be a setback in this case. It's difficult to be patient, but sometimes necessary. And after today's decision, tensions in the Humboldt County Courthouse intensified as supporters of Lawson wept and shared mixed emotions over what they're calling a lack of justice for Josiah. Josiah Lawson, rest in peace to him because he was a student at HSU and he did come up here to better his life. And I have heard all of the witness testimonies and I have even witnessed Lawson's girlfriend commit perjury on the stand, her and her friend Naya Wilkins. This is a lack of imagination on the judge and poor police work. The police allowed the perpetrator's vehicle to be removed from the crime scene when the knife packet may have been in the car. Poor police work is why the judge thinks there's not solid evidence.
man, Kyle Zollner's family, releasing this statement to North Coast News, reading in part, quote, to the entire Lawson family, more than ever, we are aware of your losses. Tonight, we get to hug our loved one. Yet tonight, you have had this simple gift taken from you. Our paths have crossed under such a tragic event, and it is not fair. The letter continues, quote, our words are not sufficient to try to bring any kind of peace to your family at this time. So we pray you will find peace and comfort. May God bless you, Lawson family, end of quote. The investigation continues into exactly what happened that night. Tonight, the search is still underway for a truck that officers believe was involved in a deadly hit and run early this morning. The CHP says they got a call that there was a body in the road in the northbound lane of Highway 101 north of the Redwood Coast Airport south of Plan Beach. This was around 1240 this morning. The body was confirmed to be that of a man. Now, officers say they closed the highway around 120 this morning as they investigated. They then reopened the highway a little before 2.30 a.m. According to the CHP, evidence indicates that the victim was hit by both a truck and a car going northbound. Officers say they found the car a 1995 Ford Escort and that the driver, 38-year-old David Lara of Trinidad, was arrested on felony hit-and-run charges. Tonight, the CHP is on the lookout for a dark-colored, full-sized 1997 to 2003 Ford F-150 pickup with damage to its undercarriage. Anyone with information is asked to call the CHP. After a months-long investigation, agents with the Drug Task Force say they finally got their guy. Agents say at about 5 last night, they did a traffic stop on 42-year-old Tito Bryant, who is driving on Samoa Boulevard in Arcata. Agents tell us he took off on foot south on Samoa when two citizens tackled him, holding him down. While he was being arrested, agents say Bryant was having trouble breathing and discovered he was trying to swallow drugs but couldn't. Agents say they found 16 grams of heroin and one gram of cocaine in Bryant's mouth. Bryant was taken to the hospital while agents say they searched his home. There, they say they found an additional 14.2 grams of heroin and 1.6 grams of cocaine. Tito Bryant was arrested on multiple charges. Well, it was a bizarre scene in Eureka on Wednesday. Police say not even 12 hours after being arrested for driving without a license, a man stole a truck, vandalized a fish and wildlife boat, and swam onto one of the tall ships docked at the waterfront. Officers say at about 1 Wednesday afternoon, this man, 24-year-old Christopher Breaker, stole a construction worker's truck. Officers say Breaker got it stuck, then illegally boarded a fish and wildlife vessel, broke off the horn, and then jumped into Humboldt Bay. Officers say Breaker swam out to one of the tall ships docked on the waterfront. There, they found Breaker shivering, clinging onto the back of one of the ships. EPD says Breaker was taken to St. Joseph's Hospital, where police say it took seven officers to hold him down. Now, because of the bizarre nature of this story, we wanted to find out more about Christopher Breaker. So, we talked to two of his former roommates. Chris told us he found a poem Breaker once wrote, which pretty much sums up his mental state. The name of the game is B, ever-changing. I can change every single moment I live. This is why I'm number one. This is why I cannot be defeated. Who can evolve the best? Don't want to change? I will kill you. Smiley face. The other roommate, Victoria, told us she has mixed feelings about the whole thing, but says that more than anything, she's relieved. As much as I hope he gets the help he needs, I'm glad that I don't have to deal with him anymore because I just, he's an untrustworthy, not good person. <laughs> Breaker was arrested for vehicle theft, vandalism, and resisting arrest. Police say he has admitted to all crimes for which he was charged. A large group of concerned Fortuna homeowners says an unlawful commercial cannabis operation has plans to move into their neighborhood on Nelson Lane. So now they're taking legal action. The Nelson Hillside Association has filed a lawsuit against Humboldt County. We first brought you this story back in March as outrage erupted in Fortuna since the county's marijuana ordinance allows cannabis cultivation on county land, but the city of Fortuna does not. Now, a grow is set to move into a plot of county land that falls right in the middle of a city neighborhood. The new lawsuit calls the 55,000 square foot cannabis operation unlawful, and it challenges many other aspects of Humboldt County's commercial cannabis ordinance. My neighbors are very upset that the land is being used for a purpose that they did not want or intend and they have subsequently joined our association and are actively trying to stop the uh, application. 
The NHA says it filed a complaint to set aside the county's approval process of commercial cannabis applications and to ask for an order restraining the county from further approvals until the case is heard. Now, we have reached out to the owners of the parcel multiple times. They have not returned our calls. We also reached out to the County Board of Supervisors with Supervisor Estelle Fennell saying she is unaware of the lawsuit, so she could not comment. We're learning new details tonight in connection to a hit and run that happened yesterday in Eureka. Officers say a woman driving a silver Dodge Charger hit a car near the 2900 block of F Street and then took off, hit another vehicle and two houses near the 1400 block of F Street. Police say that's where she ran off on foot. Officers tell us they caught up with her in an alley near 14th and D Streets. Police say this is the woman driving the Dodge Charger. This is 26-year-old Sonia Sovereign of Eureka. The EPD says she was taken to the hospital before being booked for hit and run and DUI. In Southern California, a helicopter crashed into a golf course this afternoon. Emergency crews responded to the L.A. Cumbre Country Club golf course at about 2 and say three people were reportedly on board at the time. All three were taken to the hospital with injuries, including a broken back and broken leg. 1,000 gallons of fuel reportedly ignited in the crash, causing a brush fire. Back on the north coast in the Maple Creek area, a teenager was found cold and wet but alive after his car slid off the road. CHP says a little before 4.15 this morning, they responded to a vehicle off the roadway, and the driver was unsure of exactly where he was. Eventually, officers say they found him, and here's where the story gets interesting. The CHP says the 16-year-old ended up being a missing person out of Montana. Now, officers are making arrangements to get the teen back home safely. A middle school teacher is in a lot of trouble after seemingly emulating a TV show anti-hero. Coming up on North Coast News, we'll tell you about the Walter White wannabe. And a murder case in California gone cold, brought back to light, resulting in the arrest of a possible suspect. We'll share the gruesome story and tell you how close to home it happened. Plus, the wind expected to pick up this weekend, but it should keep the clouds away, which means sunny skies are anticipated. First Alert meteorologist Rob Elvington has more for us in less than two minutes. And now you can get the coverage of the North Coast in the palm of your hand with the North Coast News TV app. Get daily alerts on what's happening in your community, plus daily and extended forecasts, live radar, severe weather alerts, and more. Search North Coast News TV on Google Play or the Apple App Store and download the app for free. We'll be right back. You're watching North Coast News on KAEF ABC 23. Accurately informing you about the day's weather. Following the storm with the North Coast's most sophisticated weather system. The most experienced team of meteorologists in the area. North Coast News. Severe weather first. I had a really nice time tonight. Me too. Oh my gosh. I'm late. My dad is going to kill me. We have to go now, please. Oh, okay. Let's go. Is your truck smart enough for California? It is if it's a Ford F-150 STX. With an EcoBoost engine for more power and fewer pit stops. A way to see behind your vehicle. I think you got it. All right. Don't forget date night. Date night, huh? All right. And even a voice to read your texts. Wait. See you soon, cutie. Oh, cutie? The F-150. That's California smart. Now lease an F-150 STX for $259 a month. Learn more at buyfordnow.com. Long before the sun rises over the North Coast, we're working hard preparing the morning news. Even before your alarm goes off, I've double-checked the forecast so we can alert you to any dangerous weather. Daybreak on ABC 23. Get the facts right. This portion of the news sponsored in part by Bear River Casino Resort.
Welcome back. The big upper level low that moved in throughout the day today is starting to drift off to the south and that's allowing for our gusty winds, but also drier conditions and also uh, more sunshine through the day tomorrow and into Sunday. You'll notice still tracking some precipitation, mainly in Siskiyou County and into Oregon. But uh, if you look close enough on the satellite, we are starting to see some clearing from the west and northwest. So what we're tracking, this is the big low pressure system that moved in throughout the day. It's going to quickly dive off to the south into Southern California over the next 24 hours. And we do have a ridge of high pressure that's building in from out of the west. And we're in between these two pressure systems. So that's what's bringing those very gusty northerly winds. Could even see some gust over 40 miles per hour for parts of the north coast over the next couple of days. Precision cast will go all the way through the overnight hours. And you'll notice it is picking up on precipitation off to the west offshore. Uh, but we're seeing mostly dry conditions. You'll notice uh, just a few passing clouds throughout the morning hours, maybe a little bit of a cloud build up throughout the afternoon hours, but you'll notice a fair portion of the north coast seeing mostly sunny skies throughout the day tomorrow. So still plenty of sunshine to go around. And then as we enter your Sunday, this is eight o'clock Sunday morning. Look at that crystal clear skies and we're tracking mostly clear skies all the way through your Sunday afternoon. But we are still tracking those gusty northerly winds. So not a perfect day, but at least we're seeing the sunny skies. Marine forecast. This is the big story. North winds at 20 to 30 knots at uh, with gust up to 40 knots. Waves out of the north at uh, nine feet. We'll also still have a bit of a westerly swell in place as well. And then at a period of seven seconds, and we do have a gale warning in place as well as a small craft advisory. So I'll we'll walk you through the winds. This is 830 tomorrow morning. If you look close enough, you can see some of these dark or I should say bright pink arrows. That's indicating winds around 40 miles per hour. You'll also notice these blue arrows going throughout all of the north coast. And as you get closer to the water, we're seeing more of those pink arrows. So along the coast, we're tracking winds around 30 miles per hour, likely higher gust. And then as we enter your Sunday, we'll go through the process once again. Again, you can see some of those pink arrows moving ashore. So some very gusty conditions again all the way through Sunday. But you'll notice even on Monday morning, we're still dealing with these northerly winds. And your forecast for tomorrow, expecting some highs up into the mid 60s, 66 degrees for Garberville, 66 degrees for Willow Creek, 61 degrees in Fortuna, upper 50s for Shelter Cove. Eureka, 57 for a high tomorrow and right around 56 degrees for Crescent City. So again, plenty of sunshine throughout the day tomorrow. A little bit of cloud build up in the afternoon hours, not expecting much. And then mostly clear skies through the day on Sunday. But the big story this weekend will be gusty northerly winds, not expecting any precipitation. And we're going to stay mostly dry all the way through most of the day on Wednesday. Could see a few showers approaching by Wednesday evening, Wednesday night. Better chances for seeing some rain by Thursday and Friday. And for the inland, with that ridge of high pressure building in, uh, I do expect to see some of the warmer spots making it back up into the 80s on Tuesday. So warm by Tuesday, but we're going to quickly cool back off by next Thursday and Friday. Stay with us. More news coming up. You're watching North Coast News on KAEF ABC 23. Bear River Fighting Championship 3 is back and fiercer than ever. May 20th, watch these skilled fighters deliver devastating strikes and punishing ground games. Hosted in the largest entertainment venue on the North Coast. Doors open at 4.30 p.m., fights at 6.30. $40 general admission, $50 premium. Tickets on sale now. One lucky raffle winner takes home a UFC championship belt autographed by two-time world champion Conor McGregor. Bear River Casino Resort. Be entertained. Toyota time means it's time to go places, and you're going to love your new RAV4. It's perfect for really getting us out there. What do you think? Farther. Here? Farther. Oh, this is perfect. Oh, too far! Too far! Right now, get a RAV4 with 0% financing or lease yours for just $219 a month. Plus, every RAV4 comes with Toyota Safety Sense Standard and two years of no-cost maintenance. Toyota. Let's go places. Time to switch to a new plan from U.S. Cellular with no hidden fees. Data overages, activation fees, monthly connection charges, all gone. Feeling ready to switch? Yeah! yeah! <laughs> new plans with no hidden fees, including unlimited data for $40 a month. Visit New Trend Wireless, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent with locations in Fortuna and McKinleyville for the best deals and great service on the network that works in the middle of anywhere. Hi, I'm Damon, owner of American Auto Detail in Eureka. As a family-owned business since 1995, we take pride in our work. With over 20 years' experience in professional window tinting and detail, we also sell and install accessories, such as floor mats, seat covers by Rough Tough, running boards, and more. Protect your investment at American Auto Detail. 
Call my daddy at 445-2947. Schedule an appointment. Unstoppable. Judge Judy. Weekdays on ABC 23. Live from our studio in downtown Eureka, you're watching North Coast News on KAEF ABC 23 at 11. Get the facts right. Just a counties to the south of the North Coast, it could be the closure a family has been waiting for after more than a decade without any answers. But despite the arrest, a motive has yet to be identified. Marcy Gonzalez has the story. Nearly 13 years after they were found shot to death in their sleeping bags as they camped on a Northern California beach, investigators say this young couple's killer is finally in custody. Uh, we're all excited to see some closure to this. 22-year-old Lindsay Cutshaw and 26-year-old Jason Allen were on a retreat from the Christian summer camp where they were counselors. It was just weeks before their wedding in August 2004 when they were shot in their heads at close range. The killer stealing nothing from the campsite, leaving no clue. It's hurtful and, and, you know, makes us feel angry that someone would do this without any thought or motive. Now the sheriff says they know who that someone is. Explaining though he had no connection to the victims, 38-year-old Sean Gallen was a person of interest early on. Then after he was arrested, charged with killing his brother six weeks ago, he was again asked about the cold case. He had information about the killings that no other person could have known, and we have located evidence that corroborates his statement. The sheriff won't say what that evidence is and explains they still don't know the motive, but they are confident that this case, which has haunted investigators and the community for more than a decade, is finally closed. Reading this statement from the victim's families. We at times wondered if this day would ever come. We are extremely pleased that our children's murderer is in custody where he belongs. And while Gallen is in custody charged with killing his brother, charges in Cutshaw and Allen's deaths have not been filed yet. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. In the state of New Mexico, there's a real-life TV show impersonator living a double life. Police say this man, high school chemistry teacher John Ghost, pleaded guilty earlier this week to making meth. Sound familiar? The 56-year-old taught chemistry science and vocational training at middle and high schools in Las Cruces. The case bears a striking resemblance to the storyline of Breaking Bad's main character, Walter White. Both are in New Mexico with a middle-aged chemistry teacher making meth. Ghost was arrested last October during a traffic stop in Las Cruces. Police found a white styrofoam case ice chest with all of the tools needed to make meth, glassware, rubber, tubing, and chemicals. A search of property uh, Ghost owns turned up enough chemicals to make about a pound of meth worth more than $40,000 on the street. The judge in the case ordered Ghost to undergo a 60-day diagnostic evaluation before he sentenced. Interesting. Okay, tonight, two California lawmakers are requesting disaster aid from Governor Jerry Brown. This coming after an unprecedented collapse in our state salmon population. Senator Mike McGuire and Assemblyman Jim Wood sent a letter to Governor Brown requesting that he declare a statewide salmon fishery disaster. According to Senator McGuire, quote, the 2017 salmon season is projected to be one of the worst in state history. Assemblymember Jim Wood adding, quote, the predicted adult salmon returns to the Klamath River are the lowest in history, with 54,000 Klamath salmon predicted in the ocean, down from 1.6 million in 2012. As a result of the projected salmon crisis, there will be no tribal commercial fishery this year and too few to even meet tribal subsistence, subsistence needs. Still ahead on North Coast News. A building we hold, hold dear here at North Coast News has been given a historic recognition. We'll explain the details coming up. But first, Fortuna and Del Norte at it again today. League title on the line. We'll have the scores and highlights for you after the break. You're watching North Coast News on KAEF ABC 23. More than 3,000 children in our region live in foster care. They have been abused, neglected, and placed into foster care for their own safety. You have the power to help a foster child by becoming a CASA volunteer. CASA volunteers work one-on-one -on -one with a foster child to ensure their needs are met and help them find a safe, permanent home. Your local CASA program will provide all the training you'll need and support you during your volunteer service. Become a CASA volunteer. Learn more at helpafosterchild.org.
accurately informing you about the day's weather. Following the storm with the North Coast's most sophisticated weather system, the most experienced team of meteorologists in the area. North Coast News, severe weather first. He's really going to cut my hair, isn't he? Weekdays on ABC 23. Over 7,000 shows, more than 400,000 clues. This is America's favorite quiz show host. This is Jeopardy. Weekdays on ABC 23. Lyme disease is dangerous. Spread by tiny ticks, it can cause life-changing health problems. Check for ticks when you've been outside and see a doctor if you experience the warning signs, which can include joint pain and flu-like symptoms. Learn more at TargetLyme.org. Download the North Coast News app and never miss out on local and national news. Get alerted to all breaking news and weather 24 hours a day. Easily read up on all of the top local stories at your convenience. Get weather and traffic updates when you need them. Download the easy-to-use North Coast News app, available in your app store. Just search for North Coast News and don't get caught out of the loop. Get the North Coast News app today. Entertainment Tonight. Weekdays on ABC 23. If you haven't seen them in action, you are missing out. Fortuna softball on its way to clinching another league title with just three games left in the regular season. And today, they secured at least a piece of it. Hosting Del Norton, a doubleheader, the two teams tied at the top of the league. Today, pitching ace Haley Dolcini led the Huskies, striking out 10, going three for three at the plate with two doubles, three RBIs, and a home run. Shelby Doble adding a two-run homer in their 9-4 game one win. In game two, it was a 3-1 Fortuna win. After the game, both teams say they appreciated the high level of competition. I think everybody else in the league's been 10 run by them, yep. and we we weren't. You're disappointed about losing, but at the same time, I'm not disappointed in the effort that we put out, and it just makes us better overall. We prepared this more because we aren't going to 10 run roll every team, and we're definitely going to compete with some teams, so I think it gives us good competition practice, and they are a very good team. And we need this motivation to get better, and we have to understand that, hey, they're, they're ranked number two in our section for a reason. Yeah. So. We have to go out there and perform every day. If we don't do that, you never know what can happen. And another pair of games today. Eureka up against McKinleyville, and the Loggers would take the first game 10-6. Then in game two, it would be Eureka again, this time winning at 8-4, but they're still slightly behind McKinleyville in the standings at 5-7. To the Giants now in Cincinnati, where San Fran's Matt Cain got rocked. Kane allowing it nine runs, matching his most ever. Christian Arroyo's second inning homer, not even close to cutting it as the Giants drop this one 13-3 to the Reds. Coming up on North Coast News, there's a new sheriff in town, meaning a sincere farewell to the man who's held a long-standing presence in the community. We'll explain after the break. But first, be our eyes and ears in your community. You see breaking news, see it, snap it, share it. Grab your phone and take a picture or some video and share it with us at news at northcoastnewstv.com or on our Facebook page, North Coast News TV. So remember to see it, snap it, share it, and stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching North Coast News on KAEF ABC 23. We got this. Is your truck smart enough for California? It is if it's a Ford F-150 STX. With an EcoBoost engine for more power and fewer pit stops. A way to see behind your vehicle. I think you got it. All right. Don't forget date night. Date night, huh? And even a voice to read your texts. Wait. See you soon, cutie. Oh, cutie? The F-150. That's California smart. Now lease an F-150 STX for $259 a month. Learn more at buyfordnow.com. There is an answer to the nightmare of addiction. The Narconon Drug Rehabilitation Program. For nearly 50 years, Narconon has been helping those thought lost to substance abuse. In over 20 nations, Narconon centers exist for one purpose, to help people free themselves from the grip of addiction 
and reconnect them with the most precious thing of all. Their own lives. She is a force of nature and natural truth seeker. She tells it like it is, even when we don't want to hear it. She rules when life gets unruly. And after years of honest advice, she has no equal, no limits, and remains unstoppable. Judge Judy. Weekdays on ABC 23. The Insider. Weekdays on ABC 23. It's the end of an era. Sheriff Mike Downey officially retiring, and today was his official last day. Captain Brian Stevens with the Eureka Police Department saying goodbye to Downey, who's been a staple in the community. Sheriff Downey has served in his position for the last six years. Downey's position is taken over by under Sheriff William Hansel, who will serve out the rest of the term through 2018. And the Eureka Heritage Society held their annual preservation awards, and this year, the award going to the building we're in right now. That's right, this one right here. The owner of the building, Ron Pelleggi, says he first moved into the building as a tenant back in 1981 when he owned a newspaper some of you might know, the Tri-City Weekly. And the president of the Eureka Heritage Society says there's something very unique about the building. What is it about the building that makes it so special? Let's hear it. We uh, were watching in particular the tower. Most of us have, who were born and raised here have very fond memories of knowing that tower is part of downtown. Uh, I chose to keep the building as historical as I can and to keep it in the name of what it is and to keep a TV station. Pelleggi says he was just doing what he knows best, which was to remodel it the way he felt it needed preserving the iconic tower. And we here at North Coast News, sir, are so glad you did. It looks great. Yes, it does. Stay with us, we'll be right back. You're watching North Coast News on KAEF ABC 23. Accuracy. It's a standard we set for ourselves every day here at North Coast News, and we don't take it lightly. We check to make sure we have the whole story and that the information is correct before we bring it to you. We know your trust needs to be earned and that's why being accurate and clear is so important to us. We get it right for you so that you can depend on us. North Coast News, get the facts right. There's a need in our community for affordable living facilities when your parent or loved one requires more than what you can provide. Especially you is a 15-bed, full-care, assisted living facility near Henderson Center. Our caring, professional staff ensures your loved one is in a comfortable, home-like family environment. A licensed psychiatric tech is on staff. Plus, we have in-home health care from Mad River and St. Joseph's Hospitals, as well as Hospice of Humboldt and Dementia Care. Especially you, between A and B Streets on Henderson. Download the North Coast News app and never miss out on local and national news. Get alerted to all breaking news and weather 24 hours a day. Easily read up on all of the top local stories at your convenience. Get weather and traffic updates when you need them. Download the easy-to-use North Coast News app, available in your app store. Just search for North Coast News and don't get caught out of the loop. Get the North Coast News app today. to see me? Agent Wells, sir. She's been kidnapped. Only two episodes left until the heart racing season finale. Use every resource, but find Agent Wells. New designated survivor tonight on ABC. Unstoppable. Judge Judy. Weekdays on ABC 23. To have somebody under the age of 20 to win it is extremely, extremely unheard of. And we're proud of that. Bowlers everywhere strive to roll the perfect 300-point game. Now that's 12 strikes in a row. Well, one 8-year-old boy in Wisconsin just did it. And not only that, it was just his sixth attempt ever at bowling. Max Kubiak achieved that perfection in a miniature version of bowling. It's called duck pin. And it's just like the real thing, only with shorter lanes and smaller balls. 
The owner of the Duck Pin Alley where it happened says he's never seen anything like it before. Wow, what a talent. I know, good Thank for him. Thanks for joining us tonight and have a great weekend. Happy Friday, bye.